No, ordinarily, you don't see three intelligent faces like this at the first of Georgia Outdoors. Hi, I'm Leroy Powell, and today I join Boomer and Charles Renault. We're here at Ashburn Hill Plantation in South Georgia for a day of quail hunting. So get your hunting buddies together, get your fishing buddies together. We'll be right back with Georgia Outdoors. What's that intelligent remark? Georgia Outdoors is made possible in part by Georgia Pacific Corporation, protecting and enhancing our natural resources while providing forest products for present and future generations. And by Pennington Seed, makers of pen-coated grass seed like our new Enviro Blend, a turf-type fescue for beautiful green lawns. Also by Atlanta Sports and Rec, a proud supporter of Georgia Outdoors. Atlanta Sports and Rec, providing equipment for all your sporting needs to help you fully enjoy the great outdoors. And by viewers like you. I got a really tough job with me, you know that? Just hang on. I said the, the earth is hollow. That is all kind of wonderful. Long before independence, harvesting our country's abundant natural resources meant vital sustenance for many and a welcome escape from daily routine for others. Our nation's leading real-life folk heroes, David Crockett, Daniel Boone, Jeremiah Johnson, are intimately associated with the outdoors. Fishing and hunting are deeply rooted in our history, lifestyle, and family traditions. One of those is the southern tradition of hunting quail. Using mule-drawn wagons loaded with expectant sportsmen and experienced dogs has the makings of a lifelong memory. Ah, yes. Another day in the field. There go three quails right there. This week, George Outdoors traveled south to Moultrie, where we were the guest of Ashburn Hill Plantation and the Pidcock family. On this trip, Leroy Powell, a former commentator and avid outdoorsman, joined me and Charles Renaud to hunt for quail. Later in this episode, Charles will show you a quick and easy recipe for quail cooked on the grill. Well, he did get down in there. Nice Still very up in there. Good shot, Boomer. Come on. That's, uh, I like that. The, the, the feather's coming back, though, a little. <laughs> They're real birds. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Well, there we go. That's two birds. Roy, you getting your shot this time? Oh boy! Oh boy. I can hardly <laughs> wait. Hey, y'all covered yourselves with glory. That was wonderful. <laughs> should have hit that one bird, but well, 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 I should have hit that other bird too. That'll be another one. I think there's plenty out here. Oh, and right. I tell you, I love watching these dogs work. Hey, our view. Yeah, I tell you, I like this uh, hunting in the, in the pines thing. Usually. When I've gone, it's been in a field situation. Yeah. And this is sort of pretty. This is... Boy. All right. Showtime. Okay. All right, Leroy. Here's your chance. Okay. You and me, Leroy. It's us. Okay. I'll take the right side this time. Well, I got to kind of used to being on Jerry's right. Okay. Oh, oh. Got him. Uh, should have shot. You leaving some for seed, as Ramsey says? Yes, indeedy. Yeah, yeah. That's the famed Powell shoot and release. One of the rules that they have here at the plantation is to always pick up your brass. And that's not a bad idea 
wherever you're hunting, as a matter of fact, so that you don't litter up the place and keep it nice and clean. You may be hunting on somebody's private property, so always pick up your brass. Jerry, what's that green box up there for? We use it for call birds. Uh, early part of the season, we have great success with keeping our birds bunched up, uh, especially our stock birds, and all. It gives them a place to come back to, you know, when you break them out off the cubby and all. Uh, we feed in water here. Uh, it's in a Lespedeza patch, which is a great quail feed also. Uh, but we have great success with it during the early part of the season. Do what? Whoa, lady. Please, whoa. You ready? Whoa, whoa, lady, whoa. Well, come on around, Joe. Well, lady. All right. Let's walk on up, y'all. There you go. All right. Good shoot. I like the pace of this. Yeah. Do you sort of ride along there easy, wait do for you? the dogs to do the do work, you? get down, miss a couple of shots, climb back on, <laughs> absorb a lot of abuse <laughs> from your friends. <laughs> Let me have George's buddy right quick, please. Now, George is not your average uh, pointer, is he? No, George is he's a yellow Labrador retriever who uh, a lot of times birds, either a pointer won't hunt dead, the dead bird is in too thick a cover to get, and that's where your lab comes in. Comes in handy retrieving your dead birds. Cause they're, they're, of, they call him a retriever for a good exactly, reason. Exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. They don't miss many of them. Yeah. You, won't, you won't lose many birds. Lose, dead birds with him. Uh, Ramsey Ashburn Hill's been around for quite some time, hasn't it? The hunting business or the property? Well, I guess you'd have to start back with the property, wouldn't you? Yeah, it was. Got a point. It's been Ooh. around. It was purchased by the Ashburn family. Really? Uh, and my uh, great-grandfather married Miss Ashburn. I'm going to get back to that in just a second. Let's take care of some business right All here. Right. Now, Tiny, this is she, she's a new dog for you guys, right? Just bought her yesterday. Y'all would walk up a little bit. Yes, sir. She, she's in the house. It's in. The... That, I don't want to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mary, tell me about the history of the plantation. Ah. Uh. It was bought. Yeah, Frank, Frank Pitcock, Frank Ramsey Pitcock Sr. married um, Willie Warren Ashburn uh -huh. in 1902. Yeah. This was originally Ashburn property, and she was one of four daughters. Uh huh. Uh, and, and this was her part of her inheritance from Mr. Ashburn. And tobacco plays a big role here. The, the tobacco business was started by my grandfather, uh -huh. and Dad started the hunting business. So where's the name Ashburn Hill come from? Because this was Ashford property. Ashford, Ashford property. Mm -hmm. Lamar, I noticed a lot of fire rings on the trees out here. About how often do you burn? We burn half to a third over the year. You know, you get back to each section about every three years. You keep the undergrowth down, keep the scrub oaks out, keep it where you can walk and go through the wood without a lot of trouble. I've, uh, that's a lot of land out here. How many acres do you hunt? I hunt over about 5,500 acres. 5,500. Well, hunting 5,500 acres out here, that seems like uh, you'd have to supplement your bird population somehow. We start in early September with a 10-week-old birds, do an early release program, and then through the hunting season as we need to, you know, we'll release additional birds as needed to get through the year and keep everybody in plenty of birds all year. I see. Well, it sure is beautiful out here. Thanks, sir. We have a point. Here it is. Too low. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Get in. All right, good shot. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Nice shot, Boomer. Come on, Tiny. Thank you. Thank you, golly. Whoa! Have to make sure that they get up, though. Yes, whoa. indeed. Don't That's want those low what? birds. Whoa! A couple of lessons, and you might whoa. learn something. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. You did. You know, what it comes down to is if you point it at it, pull the trigger, you hit something, don't you? Sometimes.
This is nice. This is the way quail hunting is supposed to be, the traditional mule wagon and all that sort of oh, thing. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, it takes you back. And, of course, we don't have enough springs on this thing, Lamar. <laughs> but they're supposed to, that's the, the character of the wagon, that's I guess. Right. I don't think they had springs back then. Either. No, no. This is something that's, uh, I guess, the wagon with the mules, they had to have a way to get their dogs out to, uh, out to the hunts. And uh, they're like, just like the same situation we have here. we got a dog on point right up here. Yes, 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 yes. You been guiding here very long, Jerry? Yes. Been here a little over 25 years. 25? You started about when they started, didn't you? Yeah. All right. Looks like Jake has done done his work for us, too. Got a single down right there. Two clean misses. Left side's not my side. No. You want to try it again? In recent years, <laughs> Bob White quail populations have been steadily declining. One of the most significant factors contributing to this problem is the way land is now being used. Consolidation of large numbers of small farms into a few large ones has resulted in the removal of hedgerows to create expansive fields and clean farming with little habitat for the bobwhite. Urbanization has taken a toll on habitat for all wildlife, with an estimated 2,000 acres cleared for development in the United States every day. Weather patterns, too little or too much rainfall, chemicals that destroy weeds and insects, and even fire ants have devastated quail populations. The decline in this population is reflected in the statistics for resident quail hunters. In the 1974-75 hunting season, there were more than 113,000 licensed quail hunters in Georgia. However, by the 92-93 season, this figure had dropped to less than 32,000. Wagons to the rear, it's going to be 120 degrees, we'll keep it to our rear and all, watch out for low birds, everybody straight ahead. Boop. I see it. Boop. I see him. Boop. 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 Jerry, I see a lot of dogs out there. To all the uh, guys work with all dogs, do you have specific dogs you work with? No, sir. Each guy has his own set of dogs that he hunts. Uh, why? I mean, why do they do that? Well, each each guide, he learns his dogs, and the dogs learn the guide, so uh, he knows what to expect then from his dog. I see. Well, if somebody were to take your dog out, do you think you could tell the difference? Yes, sir. They would know the difference. Really? <laughs> yes, sir. How they? Yes, sir. Oh, you guys, they, there's more birds in here, I think. Good shot. All right. Good shot, Leroy. Nice shot. Nice Thanks. <laughs> Only took me two to do it. <laughs> but we got well, that's why they well I got his three. range on the first one, and I zeroed in it. Yeah. Only on the second one. The old radar. Yes, indeedy. <laughs> Great way the dogs work. When, uh, when I was younger, me and my dad would go bird hunting, but we didn't, we didn't always have a dog. Sometimes my uncle, we'd get to go with him, and he'd have a dog. But most times we'd walk around through those mountains up around Jasper up in North Georgia and uh, scare up birds. That's the way we bird hunted back then. You know, it's a whole lot like fishing. You look out there, and you can't really see anything except grass and trees, but you know what's out there? Quails are out there, and you don't know where they are, and you don't know when they're going to get up. But when you get yourself a good dog, and you get yourself some good companions, and you got yourself a gun, and you got a nice day like this, there is nothing, nothing like it, except never shot a 10-pound quail. On the other hand, I've never caught a 10-pound bass either, so there you go. You know, a lot of guys I've talked to, they say, ask me about natural quail populations. Uh -huh. Well, they're not what they well, used to be. Uh -huh. What do you think is some of the problems? Why well, there's not so much 
many natural quail available anymore. Should be a lot of it to the fire ant population, which is fire ants, which has gotten so much bigger. Mm -hmm. Really? The fire ants come in, and uh, when the eggs hatch, uh -huh. they eat chicks, just like they do the turkey. Oh. That's that, one of the... Well, that along out? with, you know, the coyote population has grown. Birds. Birds. Whoops. Wool girl. Got one right over there. Yeah. Yours. All good right, shot. good shot. Boomer. Thank you. You ought to make it. Yeah, here. Is there anything that the private landowner can do, I mean, to help the quail population? Well, planting feed plots is as big a help as you can be. Really? Yeah, then they, they can, I guess the food is more centrally located. They can't, don't have to go out and be, be so vulnerable searching for food. And the burning of the woods is a big help also. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, provides for new growth and everything. So. Uh-huh. Lady! Buggies to the rear. Oh, we have a little bird. Great follower. Okay. I'll tell you what, this has been a great day. The birds have been flying great and the oh, dogs have been working well. I'm a happy dog. I'm a happy dog. What do you expect that? here? I'm going to. Oh. Good shot. Good shot. Oh, man. Got this one oh. over here. Didn't get the double. I'm a happy dog. Mr. Boomer, I think that's about all the birds we had here. It was a good cutter rod. Man, that was. Yes. I enjoyed that. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Man, I tell you what. This has been great. It has been a nice day. I tell you what. Well and all. Thanks, really Jake. Been nice. And, and thanks, Jerry. I've enjoyed being with you all this afternoon. Really, the hospitality long, that uh, day day. you guys have shown us over at the Ashburn Hill Preserve has been, I mean. Well, we appreciate that. It, uh, it's time, though, for us to get back, though. We need to get back to the wagon and get back over to the lodge because okay. we got somebody that's going to do a little cooking, I believe. See if all Charles right. is up for it. The natural quail populations have seen a dramatic decline during the past 25 years. Research, restocking, data gathering, and other programs are continuing to try to answer difficult questions about bird population. As these questions are answered, plans can be put into place to rejuvenate the natural wild coveys of quail in the south, where they're the prince of game birds. The sport is still alive and well, especially when you can enjoy it in the grand traditional style of mule-drawn wagons, great dogs, and good friends. Oh, Charles. I can't remember when I had a better time. Oh, yeah. Well, that was great. That was real good shooting, boys. Clear? Clear. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do that because guns are unloaded. We'll put those away there. Now, Charles? Yes, sir. We have bag some quail today. I understand you have a recipe. You're going to do some cooking. Is that right? I'm, I'm going to try. What, what do you got in store for got us? got quail with uh, gravy. It's a real quick grilled quail with... Uh, See, I'm starting to already drool over here, little Leroy. Bacon, onion, and mushroom gravy. Take, it's real quick, real easy. All right. Well, then let's get back over to the lodge. That means you clean the birds. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> you cook, you don't clean. <laughs> When you're out hunting or enjoying the resources and heritage of Georgia, keep this in mind. Always think safety and act responsibly. Hi, I'm Charles Renaud. Now that I've donned the cooking red instead of the hunting orange, which I didn't do very good at, hopefully we can turn these quail and gravy into a mighty fine, easy recipe. We're going to start with four medium-sized quail 
A little bit of cooking oil, doesn't matter which kind. I use vegetable oil. You can have canola, sesame, olive oil, it doesn't matter. We're going to put a light coating of oil on these just to give your seasoning something to stick to. Rub it in a little bit. Now your seasoning. Today I'm using Greek seasoning. You can use cayenne pepper, salt and pepper, lemon pepper, whichever seasoning you prefer. It's not that big a thing into the recipe that it should. you have to use what I use. All we want to do, put a light coating on there and rub that in. And now we're, these are ready for the grill. So we get these on. Now this grill uses indirect heat, but you can do these over direct heat. Doesn't matter. Just keep an eye on them. You may want to turn them periodically over direct heat. And now we'll move on to our gravy. But before we do that, a little quick tip here. When you're cooking quail or any wild game, or chicken or beef for that matter, use a meat thermometer. You can pick them up at any local market. You want to take the quail in the deepest part of the breast, up to 155, 160 degrees. Eliminates all the guesswork. Indirect, direct heat, it doesn't matter. You know it's done. Now in this pan for the gravy, I've already browned about a quarter pound of bacon. Once that was good and brown, I added about a half an onion, medium-sized onion, it's been chopped, and let that cook until the onion was translucent. Okay, now we're going to put this back on the grill, and now we're going to add some cream of soup. Now, what I mean by cream of soup, you can use any cream of mushroom, cream of celery, cream of broccoli, it doesn't matter. Whichever one suits your taste the best. Today, we're using cream of mushroom, and we're just going to add this in, or maybe we'll add it in. To our mixture, we'll put in a little bit of water, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Now, if you get your gravy too thin, don't worry about it. Instead of using cornstarch or trying to add things to it, just try instant potatoes. It'll thicken up your gravy, give it a great flavor. Now, this is just about heated. All you want to do is just bring this to a light boil. You just want to bring a little heat into it. That looks like it's about done. Now we'll take this over. We're going to take the four quail that we had, put them in an aluminum pan, get all this other stuff out of the way. We just want to add these to an aluminum pan. We'll add these last two to the pan. Then take our gravy and pour over it. Okay. I believe the dog's back there has smelled this. Now you just want to cover up the quail with this. Now take some heavy duty aluminum foil. It's a small piece. And when you cover this up, make sure you get all the edges good and tight. It doesn't have to be air tight. But as tight as you can get it, you want the meat to actually steam in the gravy. Go around all the edges, pinch it real tight. Okay, we're going to put this one back in the grill. Now, if you don't have a grill that utilizes indirect heat, you can take these inside, put them in a 325 degree oven for about 15, 20 minutes. Pull them out, it'll do just fine. But this, I started earlier, is our finished recipe. And with any luck, we'll have a quick and easy quail and gravy. And this is my variation on an old Southern classic quail and gravy. I'm Charles Renaud. This is Quick and Easy Grilling on Georgia Outdoors. Hi, do folks. I'm Steve Sutton, Boomer, the host of George Outdoors. You know, when we're out in the field taping shows for George Outdoors, we get a lot of the ideas for the shows from you, our viewers. So I'd like for you to join me on March the 23rd. I'll be at Atlanta Sports and Rec from 11 in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Come on by. We'll talk about some ideas that you have for George Outdoors. We'll talk about some of the shows that you've seen, some of your favorites. So mark that on your calendar. March the 23rd, 11 in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Make sure you bring the kids and join me at Atlanta Sports and Rec. And keep watching George Outdoors right here on GPTV. 
Well, folks, that just about does it for this episode of George Outdoors. I'd like to thank my special guest, Leroy Powell. Leroy, as always, a pleasure, son. Great pleasure. A Enjoyed pleasure. having you. And also, Charles Renaud. Thank you. Thank you very much. I tell you what, it's been terrific. Birds have flown well today. We had great hospitality. And this is the way it's meant to be. The mule, the wagon, great friends, great hunting. Tell you what, we'll catch you next time on Georgia Outdoors. Georgia Outdoors is made possible in part by Georgia Pacific Corporation, protecting and enhancing our natural resources while providing forest products for present and future generations. And by Pennington Wild Game Products, providing you with quality seed and feeds to help promote proper nutrition for all types of wildlife. Also by Atlanta Sports and Rec, a proud supporter of Georgia Outdoors. Atlanta Sports and Rec, providing equipment for all your sporting needs to help you fully enjoy the great outdoors. And by viewers like you. Thank you.